is on a softly spoken mission to help shy people be more mighty. Shy people don't need fixing. We don't need to change who we are. But in a world filled with noise and hot air, it's time for us to speak up and stop hiding. Hello and welcome to Shy and Mighty with me, Nadia Finer. And today I'm joined by Nina Dinsfeld, who I've actually known um, of and known a little bit for probably nearly 15 years. Yeah, a long time. <laughs> a long time since I wrote my first book and our paths kind of crossed. So Nina's the founder of an amazing business called Life Club. Um, she's here today to chat about her personal experiences of shyness and also to tell us a bit about life clubs and how um, she's helped shy people to, to achieve their goals. So welcome to the show Nina. Thank you Nadia, lovely to be here and, and really lovely to actually be in touch again after all those years or after some of those all those years. <laughs> I, know. I know it's been a while hasn't it but you know I think that's the beauty of social media we can our paths kind of cross um back and forth back and forth and we can sort of keep an eye on what we do um when we you know when things change and we get up to new exciting projects so i'm really glad that you're here and um that we can talk some more so let's start off with you maybe introducing the concept of life clubs and explaining to us a little bit about it and how it works lovely okay um well I'll just sort of, well, I suppose it makes sense to say what, what I did with my life before that led up to it, if you like, because I feel that's quite relevant um, because I only started life clubs when I was 49. So quite, uh, quite old. And um, before that, I'd been a graphic designer. That was what I trained as. And after that, I wrote how to books. So sort of basically a ver- I'm a very practical person and, um, and, and, I suppose I started life class. People always said, oh, you'd make a great coach. You're great at listening. You know, you, you're really interested in other people. Um, and as a hobby all my life, I'd helped my friends kind of package themselves, if you like, in a way like you do as a graphic designer. You take a product and you put it in a nice package to sell it. And it's the same with people. You find what's best about them what they love doing what what really excites them and then you help them show that to the world and so I've I'd always done that with friends and then someone had said I think you should become a life coach and so I'd been on a few courses Um, and I read one day an article saying that 30 year olds were the most depressed sector of society and this was a long time ago this is in the early 2000s but I remember looking back at my life and thinking, gosh, yeah, it was really hard being 30. There were so many big, big decisions to make, um, you know, where you wanted to live, whether you wanted to, to be with someone or on your own, whether you wanted to have a family, um, you know, whether you want to stay in your career. I mean, it just seemed massive of, of very big decisions. And um, so I thought, well, how can I help these 30-year-olds? And someone walked in talking about Weight Watchers. And that was my sort of life bulb moment. I went, oh, okay, that's a brilliant idea. I will create something like Weight Watchers. But instead of thinking about your weight, you will think about what you want from life, how to become more confident, how to really be yourself. Um, Very difficult thing. You've got to know who you are first. But so that's how Life Club started. I got some friends together and wrote, you know, as one does, wrote a workshop for every week of the year, which, of course, have changed a lot in the last 15 years. But that that was how it started. And then we went into the um, National Health Service. We worked with people living with HIV and then we trained mental health nurses to use Life Clubs with their their patients and um and then we went to the corporate world and so we've been doing a lot of corporate work probably since 2008 um and the local clubs are still going mainly in the southeast um and uh and we've just launching a, a new product which i'm very excited by which is kind of mainly for charities and public sector but also can be used locally 
and in the corporate. So we'll just see where it goes. But that's so that's the kind of story of life clubs. It's huge. I mean, it's grown over the years. I've watched it grow and grow and grow. And I, I've i always been kind of in awe of the impact that you've managed to um, achieve through it because it could have been one of those things, you know, you create, you have an idea, you create it, and it sort of fizzles out after a while because it's hard, right? It's hard to run a business and to scale. But what I've seen you do is amazing the way you got in with the corporates and, and you know, chess and you've helped so many people over the years so I when you agreed to come on the show I was like yay oh thank <laughs> you thank you and oh. um, when you mentioned to me that you were shy I was really surprised I mean I had no idea that it had been something you you'd struggled with to be honest, I think I still struggle with it. Um, I mean, I, I often um, sort of tell myself off that I'm not doing more. I mean, you know, anyone who, who I mean, I, it, obviously I, everyone probably feels something different when they say they feel shy, but I, I think you're right. I don't think anyone would know I was shy. Um, I think most people would think I was sort of rather too extrovert and, and noisy um, but I'm, I definitely, I'm not an introvert. I am an extrovert, but I definitely doing things like, um, you know, a Ted talk just completely fills me with fear. I mean, I, firstly, I think I, I wouldn't know what to say. What, what do I know that no one else knows? Absolutely nothing. So what would I talk about? But secondly, the idea of standing on a stage, hardly anyone seems to have notes, and I know what is up with that. Well, I know. And, how and, do they remember? I they know. Mean? And how do they know how to stop within twenty minutes? And how do they remember which slide they've got so they have the next slide? So anyway, I'm in awe of anyone who does a TED talk. And I suppose things like that. I mean, things like going to a party. I mean, I find really difficult um, going to a networking event. I mean, just fills me with absolute horror even though, as you say, these are the kind of things that I help people with. Yeah, the but, irony is, is crazy. You run networking, sort of networking groups all around the country. How can you be, I mean, the fact that you find networking difficult amazes me. Yeah, it's funny. I know it's so, it's so ironical, but it's just that whole, I think it's that feeling of being judged. Um, mm-hmm. And I don't know whether that's something that you'd equate with shyness, but that definitely is what I feel. It's, it's you know, I'm going to go out there and people are going to be judging me. Is that what you think of as shyness? Yes. I mean, shyness um, exhibits itself in many different ways, in different people. It, it shows up as different things and in different situations. But everything you've said there... Um, resonates with me but also it's things that other guests have have expressed to me as well and so for for many of us shyness is about feeling self-conscious when people are looking at you worrying about what people are going to think of you feeling fear or anxiety um in in certain kind of social situations that kind of thing so i mean shyness can really put um it, it can put limits on what we can achieve because it holds us back. So would you say that being shy has stopped you from doing things? I mean, already you said you would, would not do a TED Talk. Yeah. <laughs> but are there other things you think that you've maybe avoided or said no to over the years? Oh, definitely. I mean, I've I've avoided so many things. I mean, I don't really enjoy cold calling people, um, which is often key to selling you know you've got to get somehow you've got to get in there the first foot in the door um i've i've definitely avoided as i say going to networking parties um even going to a party where i might meet new people um i very often just even socially i just say to my husband you go i'm going to stay at home um don't really feel in the mood for meeting people and i think i think that happens a lot so I definitely feel that I hide away and um, and I there's a bit of me that's quite rebellious. So I'm sort of like, well, I'm going to do this my way. If I don't want to go and network, I'm not going to and I'll get there another way. But it definitely could help 
massively. I think something like a TED talk or something where you're becoming an expert, people are drawn to that, especially in, in why well, probably, I don't know why I about to say, especially in the UK, but I think it's in the UK, people like qualifications, they like um, visibility, they're impressed by all those things. I mean, I don't know about you, but I remember when I stopped being a graphic designer and started writing books, even though my first book was about stain removal. So this is not, <laughs> we're not talking, you know, a, a Nobel Prize winning book. And um, and people, I just went up in everyone's estimation a million and one times. And I was like, actually, being a graphic designer is amazing. And um, it, it's really, you know, I don't know why you look at all these different careers so differently. There could really ought to be a hierarchy of careers that people are impressed by. But certainly writing is one. And, you know, someone who's a professor or a, something that has involved a lot of the qualifications is another. And so I think, yes, I've definitely been held back, not not getting out there a bit more. And how, how do you feel about that? Annoyed with myself, um, you know, wishing that I didn't want to sit in my comfort zone quite as much as I do. Um, sort of, I, you know, I know everyone. I, I, I'm, I've always been different looking, and 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 people have always said, you know, gosh, go with the difference, just enjoy it. And sometimes I can when I'm feeling positive. Um, but it's but often I just think no I I don't want to be stared at as you say I don't I don't want to stick out I I I just want to stay, I'll just stay at home and then it won't it won't happen um, I do, and I think also with with small talk it's that I think small talk I find terribly terribly difficult um, my brother was always wonderful at it and would say sort of you know really silly things to people and just immediately raise a laugh and <laughs> no matter how I try I will go to a party and I know I kind of there's a bit of me that sort of looks like the queen you know I just I'm very sort of people are looking at me like oh well she's not going to be any fun and actually I am fun but I can't I don't want to talk about you know silly things I don't want to make jokes particularly I want to have a really good conversation with someone about their life and what's going on in the world for them and what's you know stopping them sleeping at night but you've raised so many interesting things there like the idea that there's only well the the idea that there's only one version of success and that that includes someone who's brilliant at schmoozing um who's able to make people laugh who looks um the part you know who looks how people would expect you to look who's done certain kind of checkbox things in a certain um a kind of um, acceptable way things like writing books etc that ticks these boxes and makes us recognize someone as being successful and I I know what you mean however I I feel like there has to be another way a different way of being successful a quieter way and you mentioned there that when you talk to someone you prefer to kind of go deep and have an intense conversation straight away and um, that, that I recognise as being one of the kind of superpowers that us shy people have, because we can't be bothered with all that silliness or that, that kind of um, pointless small talk. We're more about the, the meaningful stuff. And rather than seeing these things as flaws or things that hold us back, I, I think what you've done is remarkable because you've, uh, you've grown and scaled a really big business um, as a shy person and you've made it you've made it work for you so rather than thinking oh, I didn't do this and I didn't do that I feel like you've, you've um, forged your own path so you've got other people to go to pointless events in your place which seems like a big smart win to me <laughs> <laughs> you've formed deeper longer lasting relationships with people you've um, found ways of achieving kind of credibility without becoming someone who's always, you know, out there going, hey, look at me, look at me. Um, so what do you think has been your strategy then for becoming shy and mighty, you know, how you've achieved a, a big scaled, successful business that helps a lot of people as a shy person? 
Oh, thank you. Um, well, I think, gosh, I mean, I think there's a few things. I think the one that you can influence is is being authentic, um, and uh, and just saying what you feel rather than what you think other people want to hear. And I think then people feel they can trust you. Mm. So that seems to me one way of doing it. Um, I mean, I think probably, I mean, there's an, I mean, this is a horrible (laughs) showy offy thing to say about yourself, but I think I can be quite charismatic. So that may be, I mean, it's a bit like Marmite, you know, I'm probably someone you either love or you hate, but, but that, that's partly the authenticity and partly sort of being maybe able to attract people in a way because of, because of being that. Um, And I think I'm also very good at delegating. Um, uh, So I love, I love have having people work with me and being able to find out what they're best at and then letting them do that without me breathing down their neck. So I think that really helps as well that, you know, you've got a lot of people, I've got a lot of people who work with me on and off. Um, I mean, some full time, but, but lots who are part time and it's kind of knowing who to call when, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I think- that makes a lot of sense. I mean, it, it reminds me of, um, so I was in the Guardian the other day and mm. I, it's very cool. And I keep getting people saying, how did you do that? Well, the way I did that was I hired a PR person. <laughs> right. Um, and the reason I hired them, I suppose I was smart because I hired them at the right moment because there was a big news story about shyness and we leapt on the back of it. Um, and that was, you know, that was me taking action. But I find pitching to the press really tricky because I'm embarrassed about bigging myself up like that and it's not something which I love to do. So... I delegate to someone who's really good at it and that's their job um, rather than trying to, you know, why fight the thing that you find completely awkward and awful? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, I mean, again, and I think, you know, people expect you because you're good at one thing to be good at everything. Mm. And I mean... Uh, funny enough, I don't mind pitching to the press, though I'm not a PR person because they managed to pitch in a brilliant way. But I don't mind phoning someone up and saying, are you interested in an article on that? Whereas I do find it very difficult phoning up an organisation and saying, are you interested in hearing more about our product? So I think one can be good at cold calling or you know selling something to one group of people and not to another but because mm-hmm. I've I spent so long writing and and as a journalist and as an author that's a, a field I feel quite comfortable in whereas um I haven't really had a job since I was in my early 20s and so that going into a company I feel sort of a, I feel an imposter I mean what do I know about working in a company what do I know about the things they're worried about and the things um the things they've got going on and you know so it, i think it's it's how how you're feeling within yourself and it's not in in that sense it's i don't know how much it's to do with shyness or maybe just feeling comfortable um that you know what they're doing and that you know what they're looking for i mean i know that newspapers are looking for copy so i i don't feel bad about phoning them up whereas i don't really know whether an organization is looking to be happier or not so so i do feel very nervous about talking to them or visiting them or whatever so i think it's also there's something to do with um kind of going to where your heart is in a way and your experience that makes you feel less shy yeah for sure I think we've got um skills and strengths that we that we commit to leverage rather than always seeking to push ourselves to be something that we you know that we're not or that we find harder and I don't think there's any shame like for example and let's imagine that you decided I'm not ever going to phone an organization instead I'm going to either hire someone to do it for me or 
I'm going to come at it from a different direction where I get coverage in, um, say, the press, which organisations read. So that would be a way around it. And that's, you know, that way you're, you're not changing your personality and you still get results. So when I, when I work with people um, in the Shine Mighty Society, that's the kind of stuff we look to do. It's um, you know, pushing yourself forward a little bit at a time, but also being smart and using your strengths rather than trying to always be out of your comfort zone to such an extent that you freeze. Um, Absolutely. Because it's just horrible and uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's really good advice. Um, I, I completely agree. And have you, um, so have you seen um, a lot of shy people, would you say, in the life clubs? Do they, do they come to you and have you, been, have you been helping them to achieve their goals as well? I would say most of the people who come to life clubs are quite shy or introverts or whatever you'd like to call them. I think often extroverts have a a sort of huge network of people that they'll talk to. Whereas if you are shyer, it's quite nice going somewhere where you can be anonymous and, and, and yet yourself. Um, So we do have lots of shy people and we do really, um, I mean, the workshops are all designed to help people, feel more confident and know what they want so whether it's you know someone in an organization who um it really feels the role that they're doing is beneath them and they'd like to ask for something bigger but are very nervous about doing it or um you know whether it's someone who's put all their life into their job and has realized they haven't really got a life outside their work. I mean, it's, it's about, um, I suppose it's about making people aware of what could be changed and how they can do it. I think we both are creating a space for people to work Mm -hmm. on themselves and to, to make progress where they're supported and they're not, um, I mean, I, I just cannot bear when you go to things and you feel like you're sort of being shouted at or lectured by people um, or dominated by louder people. That feels so, it's so common um, and and I think it's unusual to have a space for for quieter people to to work on themselves and to shine. Mm, Absolutely. Um, There's clearly a lot of us around. (laughs) Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I I can feel shy. I mean, I've got four, well, three very, very extrovert children and one less extrovert and a husband who's less extrovert. But I mean, I can feel really shy in my own family when they're all, you know, making funny jokes. So it's that sort of, oh my golly, you know, what have I created? I've created these gorgeous people. But suddenly there's no room for me in there anymore and for me to be myself and just sit quietly and I just sit quietly and listen and but it's not I I much prefer taking a more active role if I can if I'm feeling a little bit braver it's funny the shrinking the word you said they're shrinking I definitely do that too where it's loud people are kind of filling the room with noise and kind of uh effervescence I guess and uh, you can often find yourself sat on the sofa just sort of shrinking into yourself you're listening and observing but at the same time you want to take part and be a bit more involved but it can become quite tricky and I think um, in my family it can be hard when um, say my son's really loud <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know quite how it happened um, and also when they're watching football for example my husband and my son it's just loud they're so loud and you feel a bit on the outside and you can't really kind of butt in almost and you're not quite sure what to say and I just find myself going off and uh, maybe being in another room sometimes which is probably for my own sanity but then at the same time it's um it seems I think sometimes difficult to even speak up in your own home (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, and, and it feels a bit hurtful in a way, doesn't it? That, you know, no one wants to include you. At least I feel hurt. I probably shouldn't. But yeah. um, but that kind of, oh, well, you know, wh- why, why aren't they involving me in this? I mean, it's quite clear I have no idea what teams are playing. Or, you know, <laughs> yeah. And they would probably say, well, you know, you really ought to swat up on what teams are playing and then we'd include you. So it's a, it's a catch-22. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely, it definitely is strange when you feel a bit of an outsider in your own home. I know what you mean. I think I find um, there's some strategies I've figured out are things like being the person who um, provides the snacks. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll like learn a couple of facts about something or have have a small point of view on something so at least I can say something or I'll ask some questions because otherwise I feel like you know the whole weekend can sometimes go past and you felt entirely excluded from all of it which is a, it's not a great feeling so um I think yeah I can I encourage you to do a bit of swatting up I guess so that we can take a bit more um of an active role in our own home otherwise it's yeah yeah absolutely I mean I I definitely agree I would rather educate myself a little so I can say oh you know I, I don't know um Fred X did well there but I I find I mean I'm I definitely don't like the sort of traditional female role of making the snacks I'm really I feel really ungracious but I think well look you know I'm not being included in this and I don't really care whether you go hungry (laughs) or not which is really (laughs) horrible but anyway I'm not some I'm not a kind of um I'll make the lovely snacks and and yeah so that's I'm 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 glad that you did I think then I don't make dinner I'll make the snacks that's fine I'm not doing the dinner they can get lost and do that themselves (laughs) oh brilliant yeah no I just it just depends I don't really like cooking um so it doesn't ever feel like I when I cook it's the way into someone's heart it's I, I mean I'm quite a good cook but I just don't enjoy it so um yes I think I've I kind of feel slightly like I've done 30 years of cooking for the family and I've, <laughs> I've definitely gone on strike now so oh my uh, gosh I think I'm gonna go on strike well before 30 years right now I'm <laughs> still like okay I'll do it for a bit longer but then after that it's gonna it's gonna wear off before yeah. we finish though I've got more questions for you I yeah. want to know about how you've managed to be so consistent because in the time I've known you I've probably jumped back and forth and done a whole bunch of different things but you have continued to grow live club um consistently over the years and that's i think one of the things that's helped you to achieve such big results you didn't give up yes well i mean that's very sweet of you to notice nelly because i think we're actually quite similar i mean i'm i'm definitely someone who loves doing different things and um within the banner of life clubs i've done quite a lot of different things but it's all pointing in the same direction so it doesn't look like i'm doing different things um but yeah i mean i suppose the first 49 years of my life would spent doing different things so um maybe i got that a bit out of my system um but no i don't think so i mean i'm always you know coming up with oh I'm I, you know gosh I'd love that um that jumper I'd love to do a range like that or something I mean I I cannot stop my mind jumping to ideas which is like you I think yeah <laughs> yeah and <laughs> it's it's very hard um limiting them I mean do you I don't know whether you or anyone listening has come across the Enneagram no I've never heard um, well, it's a, it's a personality typing system. It isn't really. I mean, people who know it and love it say it's a sort of map of the world. But um, <clears throat> there's um, my my personality type is is the person who is greedy, really. I mean, just wants to experience everything that life has to offer, um, which involves you know changing career direction every few years because you're bored. Um, and uh, one of the, the things that the Enneagram is really keen on is that people like me 
stay constant and um our our sort of mantra if you like our, our important word is sobriety so it's i mean nothing to do with alcohol it's sobriety of life um so instead of sort of saying you know i want to try this with my career just saying no focus on what you're doing just keep focusing keep sobriety keep sober keep small i mean you know i when i go to a um you know restaurant or something i want to eat everything on the menu it's about that love of 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 experience and experimenting and everything and it's really helped me kind of look at things and my family have really helped because they go now nina is that really what you need to do or is that a distraction and it's those dist- I've, I've really tried 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 as hard as i can to get rid of distractions and i haven't fully succeeded but i have definitely got better so maybe it's about <laughs> picking a, a big a big enough umbrella that everything you love can go into it yeah i've never heard of that but that sounds fascinating i should definitely look at is it so it's called remind me what it's called again it's called the enneagram and it's okay. um e-n-n-e-a g-r-a-m it's it's greek yeah there are places around the country it's on it's on the internet like everything else but (laughs) it's it's really i mean i've found it the best personality typing system around it's a bit complicated which is why they don't normally do it in the workplace because it's not about telling someone what they are it's about them finding out through watching other people so it really i found it so helpful that sounds fascinating we should definitely go and check that out and i think you know the limiting distractions keeping focused and moving forward has certainly been um the key to me achieving anything ever brilliant brilliant <laughs> because i find i'm definitely an ideas person and there's a temptation when you've had an idea to almost not even be bothered to um, implement it mm-hmm. but because it's the joy of that in the, it's the endorphins I guess of having the idea that like, oh look what I could do um and then once I start creating something I'm almost instantly a bit bored with it so for me um sticking to one thing and really putting in the effort has helped and you know that's also an approach that I take with um shyness to try and overcome the things that scare me or the things which I would resist doing I feel like it's um it's not going to be an overnight um piece of magic that will enable someone who's afraid of public speaking i wonder if in 2020 wouldn't it be wonderful if you and i did both end up doing a ted talk (laughs) yeah well maybe well that's a challenge we'll just have to figure out the notes thing i might have to write it on my leg or something Bobby, stop it. I thought we did well to get through everything without him barking. I'm going to have to edit this for now. Don't worry, he sounds... He sounds He's very, very cute. Happy. He's very cute. Stop it, Bobby. Right. Um, yeah, I wonder oh. how anybody is able to speak for so long without notes and not go completely off piece and end up what kind of whiffling on about <laughs> any old nonsense. Yeah, well, I think I think they are different Enneagram types from me very often um, because, I mean, I, you know, if I think about the businesses that I admire or the, I mean, for example, Richard Branson, I mean, he's created that brand under which so many things could fit, whether it was an airline or a record company or whatever, it can all be virgin. And I think it's that sort of thing. I mean, he, I don't know that whether he's done a TED talk or not, but I mean, he he strikes me as quite a shy person, um, and he's just uh, always, you know, hired brilliant people, had a fabulous idea, hired brilliant people, and let them sort of walk away with it. And I think that's that's a very exciting way to to do business. Yeah, I agree. So I think if we can learn anything from our conversation today, it's to bring in people that perhaps complement your skills. Push <laughs> no, you Sorry, that's my them. one starting the doorbell. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what happened here. I think it was the postman. Thank you so much, Nina, for coming and talking to us today. 
And um, if people want to find out more about Life Clubs, where should they go? To lifeclubs.com is is a perfect place and um get in touch with me love 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 it if people get in touch and love it if you know we've got books we've got um a sort of webinars we've got all sorts of things if you aren't near a club um yes so yes it's a welcome we'd welcome you so thanks thanks yeah thank you Nadia that's lovely oh thanks Okay, well, come back soon for more inspiration and chat with me and another special guest on Shy and Mighty. The Shy and Mighty Society is a safe place for shy people to shine. Learn specific techniques to help you improve your confidence and overcome limiting beliefs. Make quiet connections with people just like you. Coaching, support and encouragement to coax you out of the shadows and help you reach your goals. Head over to shinemighty.com to find out more.